Yeah, hello and welcome to the first part of the tutorial series about beauty retouch in After Effects. I'm Matthias for marmoworld.com and in this first part we are going to take a look at this beautiful woman that you can see here on the left side and we are going to transform it into a much more smooth version of the skin. And for this we are going to use actually a free tool from Marmo World, which is called a Skin Retouch. And yeah, let's just uh, get started. Actually. Let's start by dragging our original footage into a new composition and before I do the right thing I first show you what uh, the problem is with when you do it the wrong way. So because when you want to smooth the skin what many people try to do is to simply blur it. Yeah, So you could do something like applying a fast blur effect and crank it up maybe like this and until the, the problems so to speak disappear let's maybe just limit the effect to some region here really quick and since we only want the fast blur to be affected by this we just click here plus to add this as a compositing option uh, to the effect Okay, and now obviously our skin looks much smoother in this region, but also you can see that all the skin details are lost. Yes, it's like if you do this with the entire face, it looks like plastic, fake, unrealistic. And what we aim to do, if you compare this again to, to, to re the result we are going for, uh, we get rid of all the problems of the skin, but still the skin texture is preserved because you can see here the fine details, the hair and all of this and uh, with a skin retouch this will be actually surprisingly easy. So let's see how this is working like. So I delete my fast blur effect here and my mask again like this. So now we are back to the original and the very first thing we do is to say we run our tool. So we go to window, once you've installed it, you find here the skin retouch uh, extension from Marmo World. You can find it at AE Scripts, download it for free. And it just consists of a single button. H here you come to the tutorials in, in case you don't know how to use them, but now you're watching the tutorials already. So all you need to do is select your layer and click isolate skin details. And if you look what happened, it, it's maybe a bit disappointing because it looks like nothing has happened. But as you can see, now we have two layers here. And this is the, the key idea of skin retouch. Actually, we can close it now. This is all that we needed screen retouch for because these two layers together look like the original image. Yeah. But uh, if we only take a look at the first one, I iso isolate this one and I disable the transparency for a moment. Then you can see, uh, I zoomed in now a bit, Yeah, this is the original image and this is what you have on the first layer and you can see the first layer just contains these fine skin details that we actually want to preserve. Yeah? If we take a look at the other layer, this one, you can see it contains the like a blurred version of the image. And this is because this layer, the soft layer, contains everything except those details. Yeah, It's like skin uh, retouch splitted the image into two components. This here contains, the first one contains only the details that we want to preserve and the second one contains everything else and both together you can see they are blended together here with a linear light uh, blending mode. Both layers together give you back exactly the original image. And the great thing is that now you can start manipulating either only the details by working on this layer or everything else by working on this layer. So the first thing you want to do is to really smooth the skin. So we do the same as we did before, just adding a fast blur effect here. Yeah. And you can see when I start cranking this up and up and forget uh, the, the changes that you see in the remaining image, but if we now take a look here at the skin only, you can see that our problems start to disappear. Yeah. Like now the skin looks pretty smooth but still our details are all preserved. And this is again because the details are on this separate layer here. Yeah. So um, without the blur lots of problems in the skin, with the blur nice and clean looking skin. Obviously you don't want to blur here the entire remaining image or at least you want to maybe also lower the blurriness here. You can really dial this in however you like. But so now we have to limit the blurriness to only the regions um, 
that uh, are actually skin. So we do this by adding some masks here. Maybe if you see a bit better what I'm doing before I add more masks, I actually bring back the original footage behind my blurred layer. And now you can see when I start adding more masks, more and more regions are going to look smooth. And I don't want to smooth really uh, regions with hard contrast, like here there's a nose hole or stuff like this. Yeah, I just want to blur uh, like the big surfaces of the skin. Maybe I bring this mask here a bit more down and also add another mask. You can also notice that I split this up in many individual masks. And this is because we are going to track these masks later actually. And for the tracking, it will you will get better results if, if you do it separately for the individual parts. So if you have a separate mask for each part. One more on this eye. And you can see that this is really not fully automatic. There is some work involved. You can also try to do some keying instead to isolate the skin. Um, but in general, uh, this is the way I would uh, recommend you to work. It's Beauty work has always some manual parts involved, but with uh, our uh, skin retouch tool, it at least gets a, a lot uh, quicker and in particular, the, the results get better. So you can see it was not too much work. And if you compare the original, I solo this one to this version. Yeah, it's really much, much better. Uh, you can also see that when I show the final result here that like in the hair region and so on you get more contrast at the moment yeah a lot more contrast and this is because we have uh, only here the blurred image and we combine it here with our details and now if we put below this our original footage yeah then in all these regions here, you get the details like twice. Yeah, this increases the contrast in those regions. If you don't want this, you can, instead of putting the original layer here below, you can just copy, do, put a duplicate of the soft layer below. So I duplicate this and in the lower one, I remove all my masks like this. No? Now you have, and in the lower one, of course, I also remove my fast blur effect like this. And this means like here we have the original soft layer and it covers the entire image. Yeah, this one. And here on top I have uh, the blurred variant of the soft layer, but this one contains only the skin. And so this means both together are like a blur layer or the, s the soft layer that contains only the skin regions blurred and on top of this I add my details and I'm back to the original image but with the smooth skin. Um, now you have some more control. First of all you can add more or less details of the like you want by just animate or just uh, changing the opacity of this details layer. The default which means get me back the original image is 50%. Now if we increase this you can see that you get more contrast yeah, 100 percent details. Now, 50 percent is like the original image. Obviously, if I add to zero percent, you get a blurred image. Yeah, this is pretty nice. If you say the original didn't really have enough contrast, I wanted to be, have be a bit more contrasty. Just raise this here. Um, also, you have another slider on your soft layer. If I reveal this, this is a fast blur effect that uh, we added, but it also has this blurriness sli slider that has been created by Skin Retouch. And this tells you how much of the details should go into the details layer and how much else is in the soft layer. In other words, if you make the soft layer so more softer by increasing this blurriness here, if you make it softer, more of the details will go or more of the image information will go into the details layer. Yeah, let's see how this is looking like. So for now, we just look at the soft layer. So, and we increase the blurriness and we can see this layer gets more and more blurry. On the other hand, if we take a look at the details layer only, let's get rid of this. You can see the more blurry I go, the more, now if I do it too much, you can see some artifacts showing up here. Yeah, But if I stay in a reasonable range, you can see now I have way more information 
in my details layer because the other layer is so blurred more and more of the information needs to go here and if you lower this more and more of the details are disappearing here this is like yet now you only have the really subtle really sharp details of the image if you blur it just a little bit and the higher you go the more details you have in other words if you feel like i'm not S um, preserving enough skin details when I blur my blurry layer then you can increase here this blurriness slider to get more of the details go into the details layer which means more of the details will be preserved in your final image because again everything that's on the soft layer is what we are going to smooth and everything that's on the details layer is what we want to preserve so the more you blur the more de the higher blurriness you have the more details you will preserve on your skin but usually this value of five fits pretty well and i'm also going to keep this here as the default uh, one more notice if you don't want to duplicate your soft layer if you find this irritating to have one blurred variant and another copy of it behind it you can also say uh, you just keep one soft layer yeah uh, maybe we can just do this here so i delete the background one and i also delete this one now we have just our blurred layer with the masks and our details layer and now we want to say well actually i do not want to use the masks to cut or to to limit uh, our image i actually want to just limit the effect the blur effect yeah here's a fast blur effect so what I do is I just go to the compositing option that is just available in more recent versions of After Effects. So if you're using like CS5, maybe also CS6, I'm not sure, it won't be available. For, for newer versions you can do this, just say add compositing options and now each time you click plus it adds a new mask. It adds one of the masks and once we've added all masks you can see that uh, now the original image appears and uh, this means now that these masks that we've drawn are just affecting um, the fast blur effect and are not clipping the image anymore um, but actually i like I, I more prefer the other variant so let's quickly undo all of this and keep the variant where we have two two layers yeah because then i also can watch this layer here individually and see exactly where the masks are and everything. I, I like to work this way, but again, it's up to you. One more thing you obviously can do is blurring the masks. Yeah, So I reveal the masks here, all of them. Type with my keyboard MF, mask feather, and increase this because this will like blend uh, the edges of the regions that we are going to smooth a bit better. Maybe this is a bit much, maybe like this. And now the skin looks really good. Okay, now obviously we have the problem that only the f on the first frame our masks are fitting. Yeah, here are all our masks. You can see she's really moving a lot. And here the masks are all completely off. So what do we do? We want to track those masks. And for tracking you have various alternatives like using the After Effects mask tracker for example uh, but I want to show you the workflow I really use most of the time and this is using uh, Mocha in particular for complex uh, uh, tracks. So if, if, the, if the face is moving, if it's turning in complex ways or so, I always recommend to use Mocha. And since it's bundled with After Effects, there's really no point in not using it. Um, for simpler tasks, you can also use a mask tracker and I'm going to show these workflows with the mask tracker also in later parts of this tutorial version, uh, tutorial series, but for now let's go with this workflow that makes sense most of the time. I like to send my masks to Mocha with Mocha Import Plus, which is a great Mamo World uh, tool that has many different features, but one of the really valuable ones is that you can get your masks from After Effects to Mocha, because there's no, really no other way to do this. So what we do is we select um, Actually, it's a little bit more complicated because uh, you cannot track a pre-comp. Yeah? So you can just track a layer with some footage. So we can track this original layer here, but not the pre-comps created by uh, Isolate Skin Details of the Skin Retouch tool. So we first copy our masks. I select them all, say Edit Copy, and we paste them to this layer here, to, the, to our original clip yeah, that we want to track. You say edit paste 
And now that they are on this layer, um, we say track in Mocha with Mocha Input Plus. And now it asks me where those masks that are on the layer should go in the Mocha project. And we want them to have them all on diff individual layers. So you, so you could all place them on the same layer, but we want to have them all on individual layers because this means they track individually, which will make the track more accurate. So we click just OK without changing anything. And this will launch Mocha for After Effects or whichever version of Mocha you have installed. It also works nicely with Mocha Pro. Open it and here you have all your masks in Mocha. So all you need to do is to uh, select all of them or actually you don't need to actually select them. You just need to make sure that these cogwheels are enabled because this means they will all be tracked. And then you click on track forwards, which will now track all of these masks simultaneously. And you can see that if you consider that how, how much texture you really have to track there and that they are like 10 tracks going simultaneously at the moment. So you can see that this is still uh, pretty quick and also it's nice to see that it's pretty accurate. Okay, now our track is finished and it looks uh, pretty good. If you want to be more accurate, and I actually want to be a little bit more accurate, you can of course refine the masks. Yeah, when like um, at this point, the masks are all uh, looking still good, um, but maybe not 100%, so we can just tweak them a little bit. You can also just insert keyframes, like I want to have here a keyframe. This one looks here still pretty good. Okay, and now we continue say what now the here at this in during this these frames the head is turning and obviously when the head is turning for example this mask here must uh, grow a bit so we select just some points and move those over and same for this mask here let me zoom in a bit And also for this mask here, we can adjust it a bit. So you can see there's some, some manual work involved, but again, not really too much. Also here's a nose mask, might benefit from some keyframe. You don't need to worry if those uh, overlap actually. And here we might need to shorten it a bit. So you can see that now with just these three keyframes or two keyframes for some of the masks, we have a pretty accurate rotoscoping. Okay, so now let's get those masks back to After Effects. So we go to export shape data and make sure we export all visible layers yeah? and we copy it to the clipboard. Now we go back to After Effects and in After Effects for the imports this time we don't need Mocha Import Plus, so I close it. But instead, so we first delete the original masks here on our soft layer and then go to Edit Paste Mocha Mask. You don't want to do Edit Paste because this will create actually some effects that represent mats. Uh, but you want to say Paste Mocha Mask. And now you can see we have those masks here and they have some strange kind of keyframes in the wrong uh, wrong places. And this is actually a little bug. Uh, and to avoid this, what you need to do is not pasting it on this precomp here. So I'm going to delete it again. But again, paste it on the original footage. I have no idea where this bug comes from. But on the original footage, let me delete these masks. And now on the original footage, let's say edit paste mocha mask and you can see now we have those masks here and they are nicely following our character so now in the next step we can reveal all those masks copy them again edit copy and make sure you're on the first frame yeah go to the layer where they should actually go and say edit paste and now we have finally our masks where they need to be. So we can uh, delete here our background layer again because again we just need to do this to 
have this original footage layer with masks on top to send it to Mocha and to get the masks back on this layer because this will somehow go off in for the other layer if you directly try to paste to the precomp. So we just do this um, and once we have this we can delete our original layer. So yeah, now you can see we have our masks nicely moving. Obviously we need to again reintroduce a mask feather because this got lost during our round trip to Mocha. So we can, I actually like to disable here the masks visibility to get my original image. And now I can see how much I need to crank this blur up. And of course I want to select the mask feather for all those layers uh, to, to blend the edges a little bit. You don't want to do it too much. If you do it too much, you can start seeing such shiny artifacts at, at the edges. So, but I think you, you can go uh, pretty high here. You, ju you just have to experiment what looks good in your case. Okay, again, we can fine tune uh, the blur effect now to see how, how smooth the skin really should be. This is something that depends, of course, on your project, how the final result should look like. Um, but yeah, I think this is all we want to do here uh, in this first example, yeah, or this first part of our series. So today we looked at the skin. You can still see that there are some problems in the skin. I see one in particular, and this, if you look here, there, there are some kind of wrinkles here uh, that we actually cannot blur away in uh, no matter how soft we go because this is a problem in the details. If you take a look here at the details layer, you can see those are details that have been preserved and I'm going to show you how to fix those wrinkles that are part of your details um, in the next uh, session. In the next session, we are also going to look at this ear here to make this a little bit nicer with a different technique. So this is like for the little details to make her even more beautiful. So let's uh, quickly summarize what we've learned uh, today in this first uh, session. So you learned that you can split up your image information into two layers, namely the details containing the skin details and another layer containing everything else, which is like a blurred version of the image. Then we could fast blur this uh, soft layer to smooth the skin while preserving the details that were stored on this other layer. Um, and in order to limit the blur to only the skin region, we masked the skin and tracked all those masks in Mocha by sending the masks to Mocha with Mocha Import Plus. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this first part of our tutorial series and I'm looking forward to see you in the next part.